Hello and welcome all of you. Please listen to an interview on Space Science for Telecommunications, Broadcasting, Meteorology and Development of Education. Expert is Shri Hanumant Rayappa, Scientist G and Director, Satellite Communication Program Office, ISRO Headquarter. Interviewer is Ms. Roslyn Matthew. 23rd August is being observed as National Space Day. To commemorate this event, Akashwani brings to you recordings with the scientists working at ISRO. Today with me is Sri Hanumantarayappa, Director, SATCOM PO, ISRO Headquarters, Satellite Communication Program Office, Bengaluru. Sri Hanumantarayappa is here to talk about space application. Welcome to the studio, sir. Thank you. I have been working in ISRO for past 32 years. I have been currently contributing in the areas of planning new satellites and deployment of new applications, communication applications, and also frequency management activities. New satellite communication is important from two aspects. Mm -hmm. One is the broadcast. Today we see radio and television. We are able to receive all those signals all across the country, even all across the regions, starting from Africa to Indian programs are going from Africa to Australia. That is a broadcasting in order to broadcasting applications in order to reach such a wide area satellite is the one which provides a connectivity once you uplink a signal it can deliver that signal anywhere in this coverage region that's how satellite becomes an important tool to deliver broadcast applications secondly the telecommunication applications if you see the geographical profile of a country we will have hills islands remote regions and the population is dense at urban areas and population is less dense at very remote and villages. So all these terrestrial communications are focused in the urban areas and semi-urban areas. Very tough terrains. It's very difficult to take the OFC or cellular mobile it is OFC? The fiber optics links and cellular links. So for those regions satellite becomes a very efficient and cost effective solution to take this telecommunication connectivity to those areas. Today in India we have 18 operational communication satellites which are built by ISRO, launched by ISRO and operated by ISRO. So looking at the growing demands, we are also availing the, the capacity from the foreign satellites. We started from 1982 with INSAT-1B. In the entire 1990s we had only two satellites, INSAT-1B and INSAT-1D. Gradually then we added INSAT-2 system, INSAT-3 system, INSAT-4 system. Now we migrate to the next generation called GSAT systems. Today we have 18 communication satellites. Out of curiosity, I want to know, can we see the satellite with the naked eye? No, madam, because the communication satellites currently what India is using are at the altitude of 36,000 kilometers. So for such a long distance, it is impossible to see from the naked eyes, but their presence can be seen through the signals transmitted by the satellites. Can you share something more about the application of satellites? Yeah, satellites are used for a variety of applications. Mm -hmm. When it comes to broadcasting, we know that broadcasting television channels in India, there are 900 plus registered television channels. So they are all distributed using the satellite. One is they feed to the cable systems. The cable operators receive through their dish antennas. They make a bundle of that and again deliver through the fiber optics network or the coaxial cable network so that it reaches to the individual homes. Communication satellites are used for a variety of applications. One is radio broadcasting. Second one is television broadcasting and also known for television communication applications using the what is known as VSATs, very small aperture terminals. Typically they are the small terminals. So they are receive the communication signals. In turn they can be connected to computers, all the networks. So the, it can deliver a lot of applications. It can deliver internet. It can connect to the business establishments, point of sales like big stores. They will have and ATMs. Every ATM we see the uh, satellite communication terminal and they are also used for tracking the trains attacking the fleet vehicles and they are also used for even providing communications to aeroplanes and also used for providing connectivity to the ships which are sailing in the oceans. So there are a wide range of applications. The satellite communication has evolved from 1970s. Initial days the satellites were used for broadcasting television channels, very handful of television channels that was using the analog technologies. So the capability existed for beaming few channels. And secondly it was used for long distance voice calls. For 
example, if the ISD was connected initially the 70s and 80s, the fiber optics was not a much prominent at that time. It was still under a evolving stages. The prime intercontinental connectivities was happening through the satellites. So as the technology improved, now the technology in terms of analog to digital compression technologies have come so that more information can be packed into a smaller bandwidth and satellites have become very powerful and the band in which used was earlier we were using S band lower bands we are using the with the advancement of technology we are using higher bands like KU band it provides a huge capacity and there are a lot number of satellites so there is a very massive development in the four decades sir you mentioned bands yeah. and you are talking about frequency bands yeah, how are they right. decided the electromagnetic spectrum is divided into various frequency bands prominently known as UHF band VHF band S band C band KU band KA band likewise for the satellite communication the prominent bands used are C band which is mainly operates 6 gigahertz in the uplink and 4 gigahertz in the downlink and similarly KU band KU band used for 14 gigahertz uplink and 10 gigahertz downlink that is used for all DTH applications VSAT applications now globally we are moving further to K band operates at 30 gigahertz uplink and 20 gigahertz downlink which is prominently used for delivering satellite broadband so you can use the all broadband internet access using or for satellites which operates in K so this is due to research and development in the establishment that you work in how does it come down to the common man how do you translate that you know the evolution of technology to application in the wider perspective yeah that is the beauty of in the space sector initially it looks like a fascinating looking at staring at the sky and looking at the stars it is always very fascinating for any common man so even during our childhood we were also fascinated about that so as we move forward understanding the system we are able to put satellites into the orbit initially we started with very few satellites dedicatedly for remote sensing applications and communication applications now with the advancement of technology mainly the digital technology all whatever we had a big equipments are being transformed into smaller to give one example earlier we had cameras radios calculators all those things so many devices now all are integrated into one thing called mobile phone mobile can act as a radio receiver a small computer a clock a alarm similar kind of integration of technologies happening on the satellite sites as well. Satellites used to be very bulky in the initial days. Now satellites are becoming very compact. Earlier whatever the 4 ton satellite used to do, same functions is done by a satellite of 150 kg weight. That much of integration is happening. That is number one. Second one in terms of frequencies, we were working at a lower band frequencies. Now where the available bandwidth used to be less. Now we have embraced higher frequency bands which provides much wider and broader order bandwidth so that the capacity delivered through that is increased. So whatever applications we see in the cellular connectivity, so that similar connectivity is getting through the satellites. Today's technology is getting converged into, for a user, it becomes a transparent technology agnostic services. Mm. So that whatever connectivity I get using my mobile, so similar thing I will be able to get using a satellite receiver today as in today's technology. In future even globally we see that standards are evolving technologies are evolving. Everything can be delivered through the even mobile phone. Maybe after 5-6 years later, our mobile will be able to seamlessly receive the signals from the satellite. So essentially it translates into whatever applications we are seeing in the mobile. All those applications will be delivering through the satellites to the users. So user will get benefit of all the digital connectivities, be it infotainment, be it learning, be it entertainment, be it information about market, be it information about weather. So these are all the direct advantages of the technology which is coming from the satellite. How ready is the public to receive this advanced technology? You're saying everything is going to be in the mobile. How ready is the common man? For a common man, he focuses on the applications. What gets benefited? For example, if you are traveling on the road, we don't stop in between to ask anyone to the address or the directions. Correct. We are dependent on the navigation which is coming on the mobiles. With all, whether it is a Google app is a prominent app, there are several apps which supports the navigation. Navigation. The essential navigation signal is coming from the satellites. So what I am trying to say is for the user he is ready to adapt in the form of the end applications. He need not have to worry about which satellites, what band. Finally what he requires is the services to be available to him whether he is in an urban city, whether he is in a remote village, whether he is in hilly station or whether he is in a plane or whether he is in a ocean. 
that is the kind of integration and service delivery happen so that he can use it for variety of applications students can use it for accessing educational information they can use for contacting their teachers to get the updates so these are all the benefits to the end users during my experience we have worked from isro we have mm-hmm. worked for establishing tele medicine network and tele education network and also disaster management network the tele medicine network essentially we started from 2001 and essentially it means connecting super speciality hospital in a cities like delhi mumbai bangalore hyderabad to remote hospitals which are there in the far remote maybe taluka hospital a gram panchayat a hospital in the island in fact we had a network connecting the andaman nicobar islands to the bigger hospitals in chennai and the hospitals in the lakshadweep to connect to bigger hospitals in Cochin, Trivandrum and Delhi. So what it meant is instead of for transporting a patient from a remote island to the main hospital or a remote village to the main, there is a travel involved, expenditure involved and particularly if the patients are poor, they have to forego their wages. There are a lot of economics and inconvenience involved. And in our system, there are no good doctors who can timely attend to the patients in the rural areas now. So here the technology comes into play. So connect the technology using the satellite, connect the remote hospital to the speciality hospitals so once he understands the patient problem doctor can suggest the treatment unless it is a very serious case of surgery and all those things all other kind of treatments can be handled based on this technology similarly for tele education there are so many rural schools where infrastructure may be may not be sufficient or inadequate infrastructure and the qualified teachers may not be willing to go and work in the remote areas so there is always a disparity or imbalance in the access to quality education so again satellite comes into play so isro launched a program called edusat program under that we were able to connect 60000 villages 60000 schools using this technology and also few engineering colleges medical colleges using interactive communication for primary school it was a one way transmission where for example a maths teacher so they can learn from that second one is the higher education where an expert conducts a class virtual class the students in the remote can interrupt and ask the question and get their doubts cleared this is the benefit of technology and third one i was telling disaster management disaster management when a natural disaster strikes the first thing gets affected is the communication links and the electricity so without electricity without communication the area gets disconnected and we may not know what is happening one example i was personally experienced was the tsunami disaster which happened in 2004 it was the andaman nicobar islands were very severely affected so the administration asked isro for support my department asked me to travel to do and do some we had a working net work there in the islands we went there and along with one more vendors engineer and the team was led by a senior ias officer we went there and three consecutive days we went to three different islands and we revived the satellite communication you know the beauty once the communication was restored the main administrators in the port blair were able to communicate to their counterparts in the other islands which were otherwise were cut off for three four days people did not know what was happening in 2004 that time frame so once we established the administrator so the people who are in the management of the situation were able to give confidence to the people at the islands because they were living there they themselves were affected they were giving updates to them ships are coming the jetty where the small ships go and anchor those were all destroyed they were telling what oh, we are sending reliefs we are sending medicine we are sending drinking water be bold and it is going to come they were sharing give confidence this is one aspect which helped satellite communication helped to manage a worst hit disaster and second human humanity part of it once all this network was used for administrative purposes the people in the other islands were gathering in front of these terminals and they were communicate each other how satellite can connect the bring the humanity live examples of how technology helps the common people and the administration and e government can i ask you about the wynad incident no wynad incident the satellite communication was not much into play but whereas the satellites remote sensing satellites which are used for mapping the terrains mapping the vegetation and the changes in the environment or monitored using the remote sensing satellites so there are two possibilities one is with the satellites it is possible to make an assessment of the vulnerability you cannot predict and say tomorrow it's going to happen satellites can give an idea of the vulnerability of many places so periodically it happens various ministries of government does they across the country where are the vulnerable areas all these things but it will not be able to tell tomorrow is going to happen it 
depends on again what kind of rain what kind of floods what kind of flow of water this kind of things and second one once the an area is cut off satellite communication used for an establishing communication so that administrations can monitor from different places but in wayland case communication was not affected can you comment about the leo system or leo system coming to the satellites satellites can be placed at different orbits at different altitudes starting from 400 km altitude to it can go up to any altitude so particularly the communication satellites are placed at the altitudes of 500 km 1200 km 36000 km so we call them as geostationary orbit medium earth orbit and low earth orbit systems are called the leo systems recently there is a trend to put constellation of satellites in the leo systems constellation of hundreds of satellites thousands of satellites the advantage is it one single constellation provides communication across the globe anywhere anytime communication capability so we see a recent trend there are multiple global players coming in this area like one web starlink they are already systems are operational one web is operational with around 648 satellites starlink is operational with about more than 5000 satellites so this provides the communication across the globe and secondly they are close to the earth's surface the delay is considerably less here because of low latency communication there are so many real time applications which can get benefit from this leo constellations second one such systems are custom designed for providing broadband services they are not designed for any broadcast applications broadband you put a terminal in a remote place so that you will get access to all that internet based services anyone can use on that that is the advantage of leo systems are we into global internet now no in india we are not planning any global system for internet services that is the initiative by the many global companies like spacex amazon and one web these are all the things because it involves lot of investment and presence in multiple countries so that is currently that is a one thing which is done in the commercial domain any individual governments are not planning but for the national requirements government requirements a smaller system a concised compact system can be designed technologically it is possible but again it depends on lot of inputs so if private parties are involved won't there be a monopoly kind of thing of course uh, here again because when anything comes and advanced things of course there will be one or two players once the systems becomes popular once it becomes viable in terms of business sustainability at that time there will be many players there will be ample competition can you talk a bit about the benefits of using space technology in the classroom classroom is the one thing access to when we talk about providing uniform access to education and education to all we cannot bring all students to the well established cities or schools in fact we have to enable education reaching to them wherever they are so satellites play a big role in reaching out the quality education to the schools but how it helps the students is see the students will have higher absorption capability when see things in the form of videos in the form of interactive things otherwise the monotonous learning book and chalk are the gone are the days those are the old way of learning now new way of learning is adopting the technologies to pursue the system for example today there are so many app based and video based powerpoint based contents which gives the perception of how heart functions how human body functions how the a plant structure is there how the what are the different systems of a plant how an engine works how a rocket looks like what are the different parts of the rocket these are the things can be effectively taught and effectively brought before the students so that their perception their absorption goes up and learning increases this is the advantage of bringing the tele education technologies into the school how does space science support teachers professional development yeah similarly as i was uh, telling uh, hmm. one way is providing a quality education to the students so same medium works for training the teachers as well teachers also they have to get updated about the latest technologies latest uh, tools of teaching and latest method of teaching those can be taught to a large number of uh, teachers in one go you don't have to call every 
30 teachers to come to a common place and conduct a training. Using the satellite network, you can reach out to thousands, even tens of thousands of uh, teachers in one go. Uh, so not only for teachers, anything, any common community training, the satellite communication networks becomes very effective in reaching out to large numbers. Can we talk about meteorology, satellites being used in meteorology? Coming to meteorology, satellite plays an important role again. One is taking the images of Earth from the space. So it gives about the cloud coverage, uh, what is the cloud density and all those things. Also there are payloads or the systems on the satellite which observe the vertical profiling of the atmosphere. That means what are the temperatures at different heights in the atmosphere. Those are all the inputs for forecasting the weather. And also there are payloads in the satellites or the systems in the satellites which observe sea surface temperatures which are also used for gathering at multiple uh, places installed at different parts of the country what are known as automatic weather stations. They gather important information of the local wind direction, local temperature, local amount of rain. Once the data is gathered, in order to transfer those data, the communication systems are used. So what's the market size of satellite communication in India? Yeah, that is uh, one important thing. Satellite communication recently is not limited to any government agencies alone because there is a business where there is a communication media can be used for delivering a wide range of applications there is a commercial benefit we see that many commercial players coming into play not only that even many startups coming to satellite communication area and also even young students they come with new ideas to develop new systems and new way of delivering solutions. Looking at all those things, there are a lot of opportunities. In India, currently, it is about 4.2 billion US dollars is the market size of satellite communication and its services. And not only that, in 10 years, it is expected to go to about 14 plus billion dollars in about by 2033. That is the forecast seen for this industry. On a final note, what are some recent advancements and what is the expectation for the future? The recent advances is the one, everything, see, as we keep moving in the time space, we want everything to become easy, everything to become handy. Even the satellite communication is also moving in that direction. Today, all our mobile services are delivered through the cellular networks. Now, globally, efforts are going on to converge both the things so that even wherever you go, anywhere in the globe, we should be able to receive the services on the handheld. So the efforts are going to integrate both the SATCOM technologies and also terrestrial technologies. So that will give a wide range of applications. The one of the thing we are seeing is the Internet of Things, what is known as Internet of Things. Internet of Things is the technology where it involves a lot of sensors which are fitted in the fields. It can be in the industry, it can be in the agricultural fields, it can be for monitoring the road traffic, it can be some sensors fit in the rivers, it can be sensors fitted on the environment for monitoring the environment. So these are all the different millions of thousands or lakhs of uh, sensors which can gather the data and which can give it to the central servers for processing and it will enable for decision making process. So in this scenario, the satellite communication plays an important role in picking up this observational data through the technology called Internet of Things. So with this technology, what we can see is the mobile devices will become much more smarter, much more intelligent, and they'll be able to directly talk to the satellite, so communicate the data. Even if they go to the region where there is no terrestrial or the cellular connectivity, so they will still get connected using the satellite. So the future possibility will be much more seamless, much more intelligent, and much more responsive so that uh, it becomes more exciting. So you may have to wait for another five to six years to see these kind of things happening in front of our eyes. Talking to us in the studio was Sri Hanumantarayappa, Director SATCOM, PO, ISRO Headquarters, Satellite Communication Program Office, Bengaluru. And he was talking to us about 
space applications thank you so much sir thank you very much you were listening to an interview on space science for telecommunications broadcasting meteorology and development of education expert was shri hanumant rayappa scientist g and director satellite communication program office isro headquarter interviewer was Ms Rosalyn Matthew contributed by Akashwani Bangalore read by Nisha Bharadwaj and presented by Dilip Chha this broadcast came to you from Indraprastha channel of Akashwani Delhi